Yes, please, your question. I just have a comment about this issue of sharing data and convincing people it's a good thing and all of that. I think it partly depends on who's doing it. I think the city of London is doing it, or the city of Oslo, or city of any place, and it's in a de democracy, and I perceive that it's genuinely to benefit my city and my situation and our communal situation. That's one thing. But when it's company, and I have great respect for companies, and there are lots of companies I love, and I buy stuff and services and goods and all, all day long, all the time. But when companies are gathering data about me, and they use it because I'm male, to send me images about prostitution and dating and every, I can't open a news feed or, 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 or go to Facebook and, and you know, a, a colleague from university sends an update and the whole right column, I mean, I stopped looking at them, but it, it's clear, you know, and some of them are the same awful images from some of these news things, you know, for 10 months. And, they, and it's an ugly image about some woman peeling plastic off her face, and I don't know what they're trying to sell. I'm never going to click it. But they think that I want it because I'm of a particular age and demographic, though I never put my age into these things. They certainly know I'm male based on my name when you sign up for these things. So I think there's very good reason in the population to continue to be careful about what we share with whom on which occasions. But I think coming at it as a public service entity, you have a whole different set of resources, but it's worth emphasizing how cities and communities are different from private profit corporations when we gather data. Yep. And I think the, the role of the city and the community is, is key in that, I think. I yes. actually have a comment on that. Um, I wouldn't say that it depends on the entity that's gathering the data. You know why? I think it depends on the privacy laws governing the states that's collect where the data collection is happening either by companies or by states. Let me, let me use an example. In the United States, cities, the states and the city governments are allowed to sell data to private corporations because the U.S. privacy laws permit it. In, Euro in the European Union, data protection is much more stringent and it doesn't allow companies to do that. So companies have to share their data only with the state and typically the kind of big data analytics that Obama did in America could never happen in Europe. But, of course, this depends on where your company is located. If you're sharing your data with an American company based in Maryland, then this changes. But I think it's more on the regulation laws side rather than uh, the entity doing the collection. I'd like to bring it back a little bit back to um, um, the city and its role as change maker um, and see if we can look at uh, how, if you have a problem in a city, how you would solve it. So if, if for example, Yusuf, if, if, if we had your model of how to talk to um, what, you, what you're doing in Just Unity and the things you talked about earlier, which was truly inspiring in the ways that you were working with youth to stop them being um, moving into the extremist and, and getting them back again. Um, how would we, if, if, if I in, in Barcelona wanted to know about what you were doing here, what would be the best way of trying to get a project going that I could find out about it? I'm just going to put that into context. Yeah. Um, we're working with the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, 100 Resilient Cities, and Biblos in Lebanon have asked us for a challenge. This is not clear that we will be going ahead yet. There are all sorts of Rockefeller things that they need to um, agree on first. But Biblos have asked us how to solve the problem of radicalization. Okay. So then we will come to you. <laughs> but would you go to him? How would you, how would he, you? Literally how we work in City Mart, we do dedicated research across the globe on any challenge that we work on. Um, and we find people like you and we speak to you and we encourage you to, to participate, but we also uh, find out from you who are the other people sh we should be talking to and, and that way get together effectively a catalog of interesting people for the city to work with. Yeah, well, I totally agree. I mean, for, for us, we, we want to share this kind of uh, work, uh, but we don't have any place to do it. Uh, so we want to be open source as well because um, we don't want to sit on, on, on these good uh, on these good tools because we think that others can use them as well. So it's all about finding the right platform and I think maybe we could talk a bit more about that later. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> connection. <laughs> um, I think there's a question back here. Wasn't there? No? I can't really see where you are. I have a, oh, I have a question. 
<laughs> you first. I'm gonna move uh, I, uh, I, if I can be uh, among the audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, this source, um, crowdsourcing, um, coming from Greece, democracy. Uh, have you experienced any discussions about if these are demo uh, democratic things to, to act upon, you know, the m amount of messages you get? You mean... Uh, uh, the, the people are, you know, they are calling the bin is full or something, you know, as you showed. Well, uh, if I understand you correctly... Uh, they we are uh, acting upon the citizens' uh, wishes instead of taking orders from, you know, ah, from I others. See. Well, we, we only launched uh, officially last October, so what we have been seeing so far by this uh, app that we have... Uh, they t mayors tend to listen to the citizens increasingly because uh, now the problems are public. In the past, the number one thing that you could do as a mayor in Greece to get re-elected was remove a garbage bin in front of somebody's house. <laughs> so it, it was the number one thing. So everyone was calling for the garbage bin to go to the other guy's house uh, in front. So uh, apparently those sorts, there are increasing steps of accountability that are taking place. And Greece has implemented terrible policies in the past, God knows, it's in the news everywhere. But with regards to such types of things, especially on the city level, the new law that has been voted for mayors, the one that I mentioned before, there is increasing transparency on a city level, even for procurement. So uh, we have seen positive steps being made. We're not yet in ideal democratic uh, types of uh, you know, actions, but we're getting there. Did you delegate any budget to the people to solve their own problems? Budget, well, money? We're going to do that as a next step. That's, uh, I mean. So far, cities haven't yet done participatory budgeting, as Chicago did. Uh, we want to do this as part of uh, our proposal. And uh, how we did that in Greece, because of the procurement problems, we found eight very innovative mayors and we targeted them. And they want to do this as a first step. They, they view themselves as part of our Trojan horse. Uh, and many of them used it even in their campaigns, that I'm so open about the problems in my city, I'm going to be open about the budget too. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, we're hoping to do it. It's happened in Paris, hasn't it? I think they've given 5% of their budget to, you probably know more than I do about it, um, but they've given 5% of Paris's budget is given to the people. They crowdsource ideas, they choose the five top of which, uh, they vote which ones it should be used on, and they're given the power to solve their own problems in Paris, and it's become a very socially innovative city indeed, I think. It's quite I think Paris has got a lot of... Um, is a very innovative city and it's got some great ideas ahead of it. But the only thing that worries me about this kind of crowd democracy, this kind of idea of, of um, having an app for that, is that the public are often wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> but often, and we, we need sometimes an overlord or mayor or someone who has a firm idea about where, ne where a city needs to go, or even a country, for example. There are days in the week when we would vote for the death penalty back in England. This is a national thing. And of course, uh, you need a parliament that kind of that, that's made firm decisions about this and isn't going to move in that direction. But even but the apps that we're talking about have an additional problem, which is they foster nimbyism, uh, not in my backyard, which means that um, the issues facing London, for example, we have one and a half million people moving to London over the next 15 years, which is the size of Birmingham all over again, and we already have a housing crisis. Now, those people need housing, and we need to redensify central London. We're one of the least dense cities in the world, um, and it needs to go up, and no one wants that building going up next to them. And if you had localized planning that was, that was too strict, uh, that, that was too much in the hands of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the community, you wouldn't achieve that. So you do need a firm plan for London, which is where the election comes in, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then you allow, once you've got, you need to offer up 25,000 units. You need to find these units in your local district, and beyond that, you can decide how, it, how, the, how your area is laid out. But you do need that on top, unfortunately, and um, to make it work, or, or disaster would occur. <laughs>